Hello, lovely people. Welcome to episode 42 of C3, Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm River Kane, and I'm all alone again this week without Wren. I did talk to her, and she's doing well. She's very busy. Um, she's actually pondering going to grad school, you guys, which is very amazing. Very cool. She's super smart. So I am drinking a toasty, comforting drink tonight. I'm really cold today. I don't know why, but I've called it the Enchantress. And it's a mold rum drink. I'm not sure if that's really the right term for it, but I just felt really cold down to my bones today. So I wanted something warm and I didn't have any wine. So I used cranberry juice, lemon juice, cinnamon, cloves, and rum. And I put it into a saucepan and not only does it smell fabulous, but it also uh, tastes wonderful and it's very comforting. So that is what I'm drinking. And did you know that the magical properties of lemons include purification, happiness, and beauty? And then cinnamon, of course, invokes lust and is considered an aphrodisiac. My hubby may need to watch out tonight. I actually think Rin might have talked about uh, cinnamon and maybe even lemons in one of our episodes because she likes both of those things. At any rate, today, I thought we would talk about urban magic. Like, how do you practice magic if you're in a city surrounded by thousands of people with less green space than you get in the more rural areas? Well, there isn't really any formal path called urban magic, but in today's world, many of us find ourselves increasingly being in urbanized areas. I mean, if you live in a high-rise apartment in the middle of the city, you still want to find a way to practice your magic. And it's not impossible. It's just different. It's just different about how you go about doing magic in the city versus how you might do it out in the country. A lot of witches do consider witchcraft to be nature oriented. And it's kind of hard to connect to nature in the middle of a city. But a lot of cities do have green spaces like New York City, I know, has wonderful parks, um, but they aren't necessarily private. So You might cause a little bit of a ruckus if you decide to go and create a circle and cast spells in a city park. Although, then again, there are lots of different folks out there these days, so it might not create such a stir. But I will say that you probably should avoid any naked rituals. No dancing naked in the city parks, please. I'd also like to point out that magic isn't necessarily tied to a place anyway. You know, we are our magic. It's our intent, our manipulation of the energies around us that helps us make our own magic. So just because you might live in a city doesn't mean that we're any less witches than those people that live in a forest. But because so many of us do equate nature to magic, how can you make your life more magical living in the city? So first, let's talk about what a city is. It's a permanent and densely settled place with defined boundaries whose members work primarily on non-agricultural tasks. It comes from the Latin word civitas, and I think Latin actually has that hard, the C's are pronounced like K's, like so it might be civitas, and I think their V's might be pronounced other ways too. But anyway, that means citizenship or state. These days, it seems that there are um, more cities than there are nature-filled areas, uh, even rural towns that might have some greenery aspects to them have a lot of city aspects to them as well. But at least there, you can usually find more green areas than you can in the middle of the city. So I actually have some fun facts about cities. Um, There's a whole list of them, but these I found interesting. Did you know that the famous Hollywood sign in L.A. actually read Hollywood Land when it was erected back in 1923, which I thought was interesting? And did you know that part of Einstein's brain is in a museum in Philadelphia? You know, when I think of Philadelphia, I think of cheesesteak, sandwiches, and the Liberty Bell, but apparently it's also known for housing Einstein's brain. All right. And Chicago, which has been in the news a lot lately, uh, is the place where the zipper, the Twinkie, the vacuum cleaner, and spray paint were all invented. How cool is that? 
So to be sure, cities are awesome places to live and to create magic. Okay, so how do you go about casting magic in the city? So first, you've got to work with your environment. you got to work with where you are. So just because you aren't in the forest doesn't mean that there isn't magic all around you. Just as you can feel the energy and magic in a forest or rural area, you can also feel that energy in a city. In fact, all of that humanity creates a kind of buzz that is really the magic of the city itself. And you can tap into that energy to work your spells. And that buzz isn't just a bunch of noise. It's raw energy. And you can harness that, this energetic cacophony of power to do your use in your spells and rituals. You're still not quite sure what I'm talking about? Well, think about different cities, say New Orleans. Think of, um, you know, the French Quarter. Think about the feel of that as compared to, say, New York City. They are both vibrant, lovely cities, but have definite different feels to them. That is the different magic of each individual city. Different vibe, as I think Ren would say. Did you know there's actually an article that was written as to the best cities in the United States for witches to live in? They looked at things like the number of covens, the places for magical supplies, the spirituality and health. And the top five cities for witches to live in are New York City, L.A., Pasadena, Jersey City, Jersey, which I thought that was interesting, San Francisco. So a bunch in California and the worst places for witches are Laredo, Texas, Moreno Valley, California, Lubbock, Texas, Amarillo, Texas, and Jackson, Mississippi. Interesting. Apparently, Texas doesn't necessarily like witches. Uh, You can actually find things in cities that you don't necessarily see in less urban areas. You know, think of the weeds that you might see that you can use in your craft, little flowers that you might find growing next to the sidewalks that you can use in spells, flowers, uh, not flowers, feathers from local birds that that might be there, Um, might find pigeon uh, feathers pretty packages or jars and things that you might be able to repurpose. All kinds of things get abandoned in cities. And even if it's not just lying around abandoned, many places will actually give you stuff for free or almost free, like wooden wine boxes. Um, Thrift stores often have stuff. Your local library often has stuff that it just throws away. Uh, Project leftovers, that kind of thing, like Michael's or a craft store might have project leftovers that are scraps that they would just give you. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can find in a city that you might not be able to get your hands on quite so easily in a rural area. I I actually came across when I was doing this research, you know, I'm looking at urban magic and I came across this article talking about urban fantasy novels and Urban fantasy novels are those novels that deal with magic in an urban setting, which is kind of like what I'm talking about here, except for I'm not talking about fiction. But a lot of those deal with witches and werewolves and that kind of thing. But the title of the article, it was so cute. It was called Hex in the City, which I thought was just fabulous. And I think that applies very well to this episode, Hex in the City. In a city, you've got to be able to make room in small spaces. Um, make do with the space and the tools that you have, you know, use vertical space, go up. That's even here in in my house, um, my altar room, I have had to go up on the walls, like with shelves and things, make uh, use of space that wouldn't be otherwise usable. Sometimes there's those little nooks and crannies that won't quite fit anything. Well, that would be a great place to house magical supplies and that kind of thing, you know, create Altars on shelves, make use of your windowsills, your closet shelves. Um, If you're really lucky in a city, you're going to have a balcony. So use that, you know, work with what you have, turn your crock pot into your cauldron, use your school supplies to craft sigils, charm your jewelry, your everyday jewelry, cast magic on your makeup, use your headphones um, and listen to meditations and witchy music while you're on the go. Think about your city. What energies can you identify that are always present in your particular city? 
You know, are there electrical grids there? Are there subways? Maybe your city has a bustling nightlife or an industrial sector. Do men and women in smart business suits congregate everywhere? They're just everywhere, like maybe in New York. You know, what is your city known for? Each of these things can carry their own little energy and be transformed into magic with a little practice. You want to kind of find your city's personality, that that thrum of life that transcends the individual parts and makes up the whole, kind of makes that buzz that I was talking about. You know, we spend a lot of time in our cars in the city. Well, depending on the city. In Atlanta, we're more spread out, so you do spend a lot of time in your car, whereas in New York City, I think that you tend to walk or use the subway um, as opposed to driving. But For those of us who spend a lot of time in our cars, bring a talisman into your car. Hang it from your rearview mirror. Mark sigils on your car, perhaps on the dashboard or on the armrests. Along those lines, it's not a bad idea to carry a protective amulet in the city, especially if you're sensitive to others' energies like an empath. I I imagine that empaths have to learn to protect their own energies from those around them. So carry a crystal or even a stone in your pocket. If you find a flower growing in cement on the side of the building, perhaps that is calling to you and that it wants you to use it in in your spell or a potion or a sachet. Although I love to honor those little, you know, I find a little flower that's growing out of the concrete and I tend to go and water it and take care of it and try to make sure it doesn't get damaged. That That's just me though. I know I'm weird. Collect rainwater. If you have um, windows that open out or, you know, that can actually open outside, or if you have a deck or a patio or maybe even a fire escape landing, set out bowls to catch the rainwater to use in spells. It might be especially powerful if it's rain from a thunderstorm. If you're in an apartment, place sigils or protection rooms under your doormat. Uh, Spray your door and entryway with spritzers using protection herbs. Hang witch bells by your door. Those things can all help make sure that the negative vibes stay outside of your home so that when you come home, you've got your own little sacred, um, healthy, protective area just for you. I mean, there's so many people that you can't help but pick up energies as you're out and about in a city. And so it's nice to make sure that when you come home, all that negativity is shed and left outside when you come inside. And a lot of us, I know, want to use altars. You can find a mini altar or a portable altar on Etsy, or you can make your own. You can use a shoebox, you know, whatever little tiny um, size that you want. You need birthday candles will work for for, uh, candles. Sorry, my throat is a little sore. The whole house is sick again. My One of my daughters came home today with a uh, headache and fever. My husband had to go to the doctor today. He's got a sinus infection. I've got drainage, but I feel okay. Knock on wood. At any rate, I apologize for my coughing and uh, throat issues. Uh, you can turn an apartment shelf into an altar. Um, use your windowsill. That's a perfectly great place for an altar. Hang charms from your windows. You know, I love those ones that catch the sun and and sprinkle the rainbows all around the room. That definitely, to me, adds light magic to our our place. Um, If I do open my own Etsy store, I think I might um, make some of those to hang in windows that will catch the light. Uh, Also, take time to beautify your city. Pick up trash. You know, when you go out for a walk, grab a, a bag with you and Uh, pick up trash and and throw them away. Or, you know, you might have a second bag to pick up stuff and that you see that might work in a spell that might have that definite urban vibe to it. One abundant source of energy in a city is concrete or cement. As you walk, pick up those little broken pieces. There are always broken pieces of, of concrete. Pick those up to use them in your spells. Cement and concrete um, has helped us make safer buildings. They they bind things together. They can improve travel. They can be used in art uh, and pretty much make urban living possible. Concrete is everything, you know, the urban, the concrete jungle, as they call it sometimes. It is a part of our everyday lives, especially in urban areas, and it can represent progress. 
Concrete is actually a chemical mixture, primarily of calcium, silicon, aluminum, and iron. So it's got magical items in it. You know, aluminum stimulates mental abilities. Iron is great for grounding. Silicon energetically purifies your body, your mind, and your spirit. Concrete can represent safe travel. It can represent foundations and stability and grounding. It can be used to represent a chosen path destiny or fate, you might be able to use it with your deity of choice, depending on what your uh, deity might be. Concrete can also represent strength. It can stay stable through events like even earthquakes and things. Concrete can stay stable. Uh, Weather, you know, it, it can remain through tornadoes and hurricanes. Um, it can hold us up. It can bolster us and provide us with strength. So add it to your altar, pick up the little pieces that you see along the way and, and add it to your altar, carry it with you for uh, peace or for safe travels. Uh, put it in a sachet that you hang from your car, use it in your car talisman, light fires on it, which somewhere safe and legal that you can do that. Another thing you can do in an urban setting is, you know, create your own green space. I think witches do connect with greenery at some point, nature at some point. So if you have a balcony, you can go crazy with the container gardens like Ren does. Her balcony is stuffed full of plants. She grows vegetables in the summer that they actually eat, tomatoes and that kind of thing. But yeah, you can grow your own herbs to use in your spells. Um, You know, if you're short on cash, don't worry about going out and buying expensive pots. You can grow plants in just about anything. You can reuse plastic containers, uh, five-gallon buckets, which is one of those items that you might be able to find for free or might be given away or thrown away, wooden pallets, uh, boxes, canvas bags, jars. Jars is another thing. Anything you can lay your hands on that will hold dirt and not let it dry out too fast is perfect for planting in. If you don't have a balcony, look into window boxes. See what you can grow indoors. Set up hanging planters in your living room. Um, I, I think Wren has done that too. She has some hooks in her ceiling that she actually hangs plants from from the ceiling. Um, If your house doesn't get much natural light, consider opting for low light plants or investing in a little small grow light. Did you know that it is recommended for cities to use the sides of their buildings outside as green spaces? Plants can cool the buildings down to help with heat waves. They can provide relief from noise pollution as well as real pollution. Greenery helps suck up the carbon. Um, It helps recycle the carbon dioxide into oxygen for us all to breathe. Plants on buildings can also provide habitat for wildlife. And it's been suggested that some green walls might even be able to produce energy. So what a cool idea is that? So uh, some of our urban areas might already have that, but I have read this article I read. It's suggested that this be done. I think Singapore uses this already. And if you have like the top of a high rise, if you plant up there, you can have an actual little park on the top of these buildings and it helps keep the building cooler, which helps the electricity bills and that kind of thing. Another aspect of urban uh, magic is tech magic. Tech magic, which is also known as techno magic by some people, is magic using technology such as computers, phones, tablets, etc. And it can be anything from a spell written into the code or a sigil for your wallpaper on your computer or phone to a ward using your Wi-Fi router. The city is full of tech, so it is a great place to practice tech magic. Tech, especially in the city, is brimming with human thought, interactions, and intent. Tech magic is something that many traditionalists in witchcraft kind of scoff at, but it's here to stay. So I feel like there is something to it and that if we're creative enough, we can use tech in our magical lives. I mean, think about our personal devices. They're full of our own personal energy. I mean, I always have my phone in my hand. So it is with me throughout the day. I'm holding it constantly. So it picks up all of my personal energy. 
you know, my sadness, my happiness, my worries, my fears. I mean, it's impossible that they would manage to remain inert without magic just because of the amount of energy that we have in ourselves as we hold these things. These items are extensions of ourselves. They're full of electricity. They have their own electricity. It's been suggested that they might even have sentient spirits all their own. I don't know that I agree with that one. I can just hear Rin now saying, I don't think so. That science part of her sometimes tries to overrun, overrun her little witchy self. But think about getting a work text and that frustration you feel. You know, I've been in bed and gotten a text at nine o'clock at night and how frustrating that is. That's a real manifestation. That energy you feel when you're frustrated like that is a real thing. Um, Think about a text from a boyfriend or girlfriend and the excitement that you get when you read that. You know, your hand is connected to that device. So it's probable that some of your energy is imbued into that object. I did see several ideas about casting emoji spells. I'll have to look into that more. I think we need to do a whole episode on tech magic in detail because this is very intriguing to me. Also, speaking of tech, think about using sound machines to help with your magic. You know, are you feeling a storm? Use the thunderstorm sound on a sound machine or on your phone. Download an app. I've got an app that I sleep with that has rain in the background to help me sleep. You know, that will help give your spell that extra vibe that you're looking for. At the very least, it gets you into the mental space where you need to be to cast that kind of spell. Don't have room for a whole bunch of mirrors, but you want to practice mirror magic? Use a pocket mirror. They have little compact mirrors all over the place. You can find them on Etsy. Uh, As I said before, use your crock pot as as your cauldron. Use it for spells. We'll do a kitchen witch episode too, because I think the crock pot is huge when it comes to kitchen magic. Uh, But living in a small apartment, this is a safe way to use heat without having to have actual fire. Sigils, that's another thing that is good for uh, city magic. It's a great way to cast magic in the city and you can use apps. Now, this is a great idea. You can use apps that follow your steps, that track your path as you walk, and you can walk out a sigil in your city. So, you know, those like the wrist, the the wrist watches that track where you walk and you can go home and print out what you walked, the shape that you walked. Like there was that commercial where the, the guy ran and made a heart for his wife. You know, he ran in the shape of a heart. Well, you can walk out sigils with your own body in your city, or you can use a physical map. And I found this, it's going to be um, posted in the uh, citations that we used, but this one was very clever. She said to use a, an actual map. She said sigils, well, first sigils are actually, they're, they're visual or physical shapes of magic that are charged with emotional energy and set with an intention. So the app that I was talking about, one of them is called map my walk you can make the sigil wherever you need it to be in the city itself. You can perhaps do a protection sigil or an anti-anxiety, you know, and it can be big. It can be a sigil that you want to protect your whole neighborhood, or it can be just your apartment building. Um, And then as I was starting to say before, uh, if you don't have the app, you can make one with a physical map, download a map of your area, um, your home or your apartment. And you can do this by taking screenshots on Google Maps, or you can go buy a map, um, but you are going to draw on it. So you don't want to use a map that's special to you you, because you're going to make marks on it. But get a paper physical map. And then you, on your map, you are going to pick out and trace over three things to create this sigil. The heart of your city the veins of your city, and the bones of your city. And they're going to use those three things to create a sigil. And because you're doing these three things, she suggests you use three different colors to mark those areas. So I would say three different color highlighters would be what I would use. The heart is found somewhere at the center of your city. It's not necessarily exactly downtown. It usually contains the oldest parts of the city, like city hall, historical landmarks, 
that kind of thing, galleries, museums. So it's basically what you consider to be the heart of your city. So you mark that with your uh, the borders of that the borders of that area with one of the highlighters. The veins are the major roads in, out, and through and across your city. So you trace over the major roads. If you have a public transit system or a rail line that's really important, especially to you, maybe you take the subway every day. Maybe you ride the bus every day and you don't even have a car. Use um, the second highlighter color to mark those veins. And you'll probably have it intersect quite a lot of what you've already drawn. And then the last is the bones. And this one's a bit more abstract, this lady said. The bones are whatever your city is built around, the reason your city was built. Um, you know, if, is it a waterway city of some kind, a port, a port city? Is it uh, a mining town where it might have a mine? Is it a farming community where there might be fields or plantations? You know, use your judgment and mark around that for what it means to you because the sigil is, is special to you based on your city. So once you have all these things all traced out, you're going to look at the design that it's formed and use these shapes to create your sigil with your intent. I thought that was just a brilliant idea. And then of course you can do sigils on a smaller scale. You can put sigils on your doors and your windows for protection with whatever intent it is that you're hoping for. Um, you can put them on your apartment building, on the elevator. I mean, I'm not talking about defacing property. Certainly don't do that. But you can do it with moon water or uh, wax or chalk or something that is not seen. Um, put sigils on your plants, like on the pots that we were talking about before. Put sigils on your plants. Or another way, and I think we mentioned this in one of our episodes, you write your spell or intention on a piece of paper, put it in the bottom of the pot, put the soil on top of it and the plant on top of it. And as it grows, your intention that you've written on your paper grows with that plant. Another thing that at least to me is something I've seen a lot of in cities are patterns. I don't, I don't know about you, but I see patterns and signs all the time in the city. They just seem more noticeable to me in the city. So be on the lookout for patterns, start keeping track of them, put them in your book of shadows or your other, any other notebook that you might want to, to keep with you. You might be surprised by what you've missed as you look through your notes of what the patterns you've seen, you know, maybe something's trying to tell you something. It could be your, your ancestors are trying to tell you something, or your deity is trying to tell you something. They're bonking you on the head saying, look at these signs I'm trying to give you. So uh, I do think that that is a great urban magic to use. And then find other witches. That's the best part, I think, of a city is that the, the more people there are, the more chances there are of finding a kindred spirit out there. Um, you know, there, there are probably tons of covens in a city. Like New York City apparently has the most covens in the United States. Um, you know, along those lines, you can also find more shops that have unique witchy stuff there. You can find boho shops or nature shops or crystal shops, um, herb shops, the more, you know, it's a city. So you're going to have more opportunities to find those things there. Um, find a local bookstore that has that witchy vibe to you. I love real bookstores. You know, everything's gone so digital these days, but I love the smell of a bookstore, especially the independently owned ones, as opposed to the big box ones. I mean, the box ones are fine too, just because I love books. So wherever books are, I'm very happy. Um, a library even is wonderful. Find a local cafe that has your vibe, and then maybe you can meet your tribe there. You, you and your fellow witches can can meet there every Saturday or whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I think that there, there is a, a thing called urban magic, even though it's not an actual path. Like, I don't know that anyone would ever say I'm an urban witch, although, although maybe, um, but a lot of us witches live in a city, which makes us urban witches that way. So I really really appreciate you guys listening. Um, thank you to our two patrons. We have 
we're down to two patrons now, Nika and Jessica. Thank you very much for your support. We can't do this without you. Um, you are very much appreciated. For the rest of you, if you would like to support us, uh, then come visit us at our Patreon. It's p a t r e o n uh, dot com slash c three witchy podcast. You can get to it from our website. Our website's probably the best place to go. It is www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you can get to our Patreon. You can get to our merch. You can get to our blog, our newsletter. Um, you can actually listen to these episodes on there if you'd like to. Um, I, I would like to know if you guys would like us to put this on YouTube. I, I'm not interested about trying to figure out how to do the movie part of it, but we can do the voice part. I just, YouTube is usually visual and we're not visual, we're audio. So I don't know. What do you all think about that? I would be curious to know what you all think. But at any rate, hopefully next week, uh, Ren can join us again. And I appreciate you all supporting me. I, I hope that this is interesting, me just yapping all by myself. But I will be back. Ooh, ooh, ooh.